Everybody, eyes up here. Good morning, everybody. I am so thankful that you are here this morning. And hmm, I think you know this, but what very special day is this coming Thursday? Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving. You are right. And I am going to teach you how to sign Thanksgiving. Are you ready? All right, everybody take your hand. And you go like this is thanks. All right, this is how you say thank you or thanks. So we're going to go thanks, give, in. Thanksgiving. I have to say happy Thanksgiving. I didn't see you all do that. Do it with me. Here we go. Thanks, give, in. I'm going to tell you a true story. Now, this did not happen in Bible times. It happened a long time later. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story about the very first Thanksgiving. And this is a true story, and it happened in the early 1600s. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? I'm thinking hmm, it was probably about, what, over 400 years ago that this happened. And this goes along, and I love, and I'm so excited to tell you this, because this goes along with a Bible verse that we're talking about today. And it comes from 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And our Bible verse is, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong in Christ Jesus. So we had some people, and they lived in England. This group of people, they were not happy with the church that they had to go to. Do you know that they had to, all the people in England, the King of England said you can only go to one church. Can you imagine? If the President of the United States said, you can come to GCC, Cornette Community Church. You have to go to the Church of the United States of America. That's the only church that you can go to. Are you kidding me? Really? Would, would you be happy about that? That you have to go to this one church? This one church was called the Church of England. And you know what? This church didn't really talk about the Bible and about God and, God and Jesus and God's truth. Like these people knew was the right thing to do. They called themselves separatists because they wanted to separate themselves from the Church of England. So guess what they decided to do? They decided they heard about this new land called America. And they decided, and they decided that they would travel to America and they would start their own church and they would be free to worship the way they knew God wanted them to worship. So, they called themselves pilgrims. Pilgrims, have you heard about pilgrims? What am I dressed like? I am dressed like a pilgrim, exactly. Here's a pilgrim right here, exactly. A pilgrim is a traveler or wanderer in a foreign land. That's what I looked up, dictionary said. It's an original settler in the land. So, here's what the pilgrims did. They traveled on a ship. Does anybody know the name of the ship? The yes. Mayflower. It was the what? The Mayflower. It was the Mayflower. Exactly. The name of the ship is the Mayflower. Now, they got on the Mayflower. And you're not going to believe this. It took them two months to travel across the ocean and to arrive in America. Now, it was in the middle of winter, so it was very, very cold. They didn't have heat on their ship. Oh my goodness. And the water was so, so, so rough. Two months. Would you like to be on a boat or a ship for two whole months? No. Would you? I don't think I would. I really don't think. But you know what they did? They landed in a place called Provincetown, Massachusetts. Provincetown, Massachusetts. You know, the very first thing they did when they got off their ship is 
They went to shore. They took boats to shore. And they knelt down. And they worshiped God. They were so happy to be in this new land, America, where they could worship God freely. And, you know, after they knelt down and worshiped God, and they were so thankful, the first thing they did is the men, they built a building. And that's where the people all came to worship God. But you know what? It was in the middle of winter, so they couldn't build their houses yet. You know where the people had to live? The people lived on the ship. Huh? They couldn't. The people lived on the Mayflower while the men started slowly to build houses for them. So one day in March, this is so exciting, I love this story. One day in March, they were in their church and they were worshiping God and they were singing praises to God. And in walks this Indian chief. What? The Indian chief? He had heard that they were really struggling with food. Guess what? Food. They were struggling with food. It was in the middle of winter. And they didn't have Kroger's back then. Oh, my goodness. They didn't have grocery stores. And the ground was solid and it was frozen. So they were really, they were running out of food. And also, people were getting sick. They didn't have hospitals. Back then, they didn't have hospitals, did you? They didn't have food. So, this Indian chief named Samoset. Can you say that? Samoset. Well, Samoset heard that they were struggling. The people had prayed and prayed, Lord, help us bring somebody we need to help. And in walked Samoset. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But guess what? Samoset didn't speak English. And the people didn't speak this Indian language, which was, they were from the Wampanoag tribe. Can you say Wampanoag? Wampanoag, Wampanoag tribe. Exactly. They couldn't speak. So, this is so cool. And I love the way God works things out. And I think of the verse in the Bible that's from Romans 8, 28. Let me read that to you. I love this verse so much. And all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. They have been praying and praying for help. And look what God did. He brought them Samoset, but then he also brought them Squanto. Now Squanto, Samoset went and got his friend. The reason he got his friend Squanto was because, you know, I believe that Squanto spoke English. How did an Indian from the Wampanoag tribe, how did he speak English? Years before, somebody captured him and took him as a slave to England. So how cool that God worked that out. He wanted to learn to speak English. There was a very kind man in England that brought him back over to America, back over to his tribe, so here is Quanto, and he is able to talk to the pilgrims. Isn't that cool the way God works things out? So what he did is he taught the pilgrims how to hunt. Bow and arrows, he taught them how to hunt for wild turkeys and deer and beavers. Mm -hmm. And he taught them how to grow corn, which is a very important crop because you can make lots and lots of things out of corn right? So he taught them how to do that. And I just found out this morning that Chloe and Annas, their daddy told me that they are related to Mr. Bradford. Mr. Bradford was one of the pilgrims that came over on the Mayflower and he was the pilgrim. They elected him the mayor. Well, do you know they told me that they are related way, way, way back. Like great, 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 great uncle was, his name was Captain, Captain Bradford. Is that the, I was, I didn't know that. I'm so excited to find that out. That is really, really cool. So, <sighs> Captain Bradford said, you know what, We're, the crops started growing. 
they, they caught deer, they had enough food, they had lots of food, and they were so thankful. So Captain Bradford said, you know what I think we need to do? I think we need to celebrate by having a feast. Let's have a big feast. Let's invite our Indian friends to come. So Samoset and Squanto and the whole Wampanoag tribe came and they had this very wonderful feast. And that was... The what? Lasted three it lasted three whole days. Can you imagine eating for three whole days? What kind of foods do you think that they ate? Hmm. We already talked about it. Deer. Yes. What? Deer. Deer. I think so. Corn, turkey. Deer. Corn, turkey. Oh my goodness. Wild turkey. Absolutely. All those things. And you know what? But can we talk about our Bible verse that said that we should thank God in all circumstances. Sometimes our circumstances are very hard. Can you tell me some of the circumstances that the pilgrims, what they, what they had to deal with, what was really hard for them? Yes. Um, they were cold in the winter. They were very, God bless you, they were very, very cold in the winter time. What's something else? Yes. They had to go to that church. They had to go to that church in England. They sure did, where they couldn't worship freely. Very good. That's exactly right. Something else. Something else that was a difficult circumstance for them. Yes. Not eating. They didn't have food in the winter time. They ran out of food. Yes. Traveling on the water for Traveling two months. Traveling on the water for two months. Oh, my goodness. Now, so we talked about that. But how can we, what are some things that we can be thankful for? that we can be thankful for. Jesus? Yes. Oh, wait. Thank you. Yes. We can be thankful for Jesus. Number one, exactly. Yes. And worshiping freely. Oh, my goodness. Do you know? I didn't even look, but that's what I had written down. That, to me, is so important. And, you know, in church where we have our little tags and we wrote on what we're thankful for, that's what I said. I am most thankful that I'm able to come to Gwinnett Community Church and worship freely. You know, uh, if we talk about things that are difficult circumstances, for me, it was so difficult. In March, you know, when we had, when the COVID first started, that we were not, they closed our church, and we couldn't come to church in person and worship God. That, I will tell you, that made me very sad. I know we watch church on TV, not the same for me. Not the same as coming and being with all of you and fellowshipping with all of you. So that to me is the most important thing that we can worship freely and we can come to our church. So I am so excited. Now, this is so fun. Let me show you this. We are going to have, did you smell it? We're going to have some popcorn and saving one of the best for last do you know that the pop that the indians took the popcorn okay here's the corn and they dried it out okay yep they dried out the popcorn and they took the popcorn kernels and they put it over the fire over the heat and guess what Guess what happened? It made popcorn. It popped. This is a sign for popcorn. Can you see it popping? Can you sign popcorn? I think that's a fun sign. So that was the first popcorn. So they grew the corn. They dried it out like this. And then they took the dried kernels and they made popcorn. So Miss Tracy arranged it. How fun is this and how appropriate that we are going to have popcorn. So, I love that. Can we sign one? So what I want to say to you, thank you, popcorn, is I would like to say happy Thanksgiving. Thanks giving to all of you. So, do you promise me on Thursday that you will tell your family you can sign to them Happy Thanksgiving. Let's do it together again, okay? Here we go, ready? Happy, happy, thanks, give, in. Happy 
Happy Thanksgiving. And I want to say a Happy Thanksgiving. And I am thankful for all of you. Thank you so much. Awesome.